It's not that the engine is that special, it's just that it's that special to me. We're building a vintage supercar out of a Porsche boxer that is completely stripped down. This week we're continuing work on Project Jigsaw and we're gonna find out if the engine that we've hand selected will actually fit inside the chassis. But first, we gotta get it out of storage. We are in our storage facility today because we need to get the engine for Jigsaw which is conveniently placed all the way back in the corner of this building. Which gives some indication of when we thought we were starting this project. Yeah. This facility houses many projects that are both customer and personal. We've got a 67 911S over there, silver anniversary car, barn find, my slant nose project, our slant nose project. Yeah, ours. Our slant nose project. I mean, project. you may own it, but I did a lot of work to it, so I, <laughs> I claim some claim to it. Resurrecting a 968. Ah, there's a, there's a project in the corner. That one's a spicy one for the future. 74 Targa. To Cabriolet yeah. version. Converted to convertible. My 1969 911 that just is not getting enough love. I keep starting other projects. It looks like it's ready for paint. Oh look, another one of Tony's projects. Which also needs a little love, but my 914, not original, six. And we can't forget the old Translog race car. Maybe we should do something with. Maybe. What's in front of that car, Ryan? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, the engine that we need to get out. But there's a lot of cars in our way. So now it's time to uh, have a little bit of fun. So we're finally digging out the engine for this project. It's been sitting in a corner for years now, waiting for a project worthy of this engine. My dad uh, bought an R-Title car while I was away for the summer. When I got back, he had already gotten it back on the road. And from that point forward, that sound was the sound of my dad. I knew when he was coming home, I knew when he was leaving, I knew when I was in his car because of this sound. And that's why I want it in there because it's not that the engine is that special, it's just that it's that special to me. So after my father had passed away then, my brother inherited the car. Um, we were starting to autocross at that time, and so he was modifying the car for autocross. At the same time, I was modifying my then daily driver, a 1990 Talon all-wheel drive. And so, so the, the car was living on, uh, and then in the middle of that first serious autocross season, my brother passed away in a car accident. So um, the, again, the car sat silent for a while, It was disassembled. I got to a point where I had to decide what I wanted to do. So I decided I wanted to keep the heart of the car that I could later put into a project that I really wanted. And also something that um, reminded me of my dad. So the GT40 was a car that my dad loved. I remember I mean, not seeing actual GT40s, but being at car shows where some of the really good replicas were and you know, just my dad's reaction to that. And, and so I feel like this is uh, you know, the project that this was meant for. So obviously this engine has a lot of emotional connection, you would say, because there's a lot of history behind it, but yep. what is this engine? I don't know right. V8s. <laughs> yep, it is powered by Ford. It is a Ford 302 out of a 1985 Fox Body Mustang. Ooh. 
As I may have mentioned, they're notorious for getting wrapped around telephone poles, trees, going into crowds. Um, and this one made it three years before it received the dubious title of R. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I guess it also kind of makes sense because it's going into a car that's notorious for snap oversteer. So, same thing, right? <laughs> it's a 302, which means it's 302 cubic inches. That's, yep. that's how that works. That's Again, how that works. I know literally yeah. nothing about right. V8s here, so this is going to be a learning experience for me as also well. Also called a 5 liter. 5.0. 5 5 Mustang 5.0. So we're from a 2.5 to a 5 liter, so we're doubling the displacement. That's going to be sick. Outside of that, we're also going to do some other power modifications, which are to be determined, slash to be revealed. I like to build engines, so that, that'll be fun. It'll be definitely different from what I'm used to. I'm going to have a little research to do, but I want to retain the essence of what it is so that, again, you know, for the reasons that I'm using it in the first place, but probably add a little bit of European flair um, mm -hmm. because of, of what we're doing with the car. Looks like we also need to evict some birds. That's they cool. must have gotten notice that this thing was going to fly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So our biggest challenge is how are we going to make this a giant, I said giant, it was very long V8 fit in place of a flat six that was notoriously known to be pretty compact inside of the Boxster. Do yep. you think it'll fit as it sits right now? So we took a quick measurement and the actual block itself might fit within there, but then we've got all of this stuff on the front. Yeah. So um, depends on how creative we can get with, you know, we don't need this big, huge water pump and fan hanging off the front. Um, we might be able to get creative with the accessory pulleys um, and the center tunnel on the Boxster and make this fit just as yeah. it is. I mean, looking um, at it right now, the water pump sticks out extremely far. Right, I mean, here's the front of the block and here's yeah. the front of the water pump. It's another, another like so eight can, inches or yeah, so. Yeah. So we're gonna have to tear this thing down to a certain level we can even bolt it into the car in the first place. Then we're gonna figure out how we're gonna do water pump, which. Probably, like you're saying, like maybe like a electric That's water pump or something. That's the easiest part, I um, think. It's, you know, charging system, power steering, and AC if we want that. We've got that to figure out. So the first thing we want to do is get all this stuff unbolted from the front of the engine just so we can get it up in there and see what our options are. So I think our first move is, before I take anything off, I'm going to pull the spark plugs out and I'm going to hose them down with some uh, penetrant to make sure that the engine will turn over nicely. Mmm. Wait, do you pour it? This is like a game. The distributor housing is also split. If I keep doing this, maybe it'll not break more. They're uh, behind on their payments for foreclosing. I feel like some bird put a lot of thought and care into this and we should preserve it. At minimum, at least a bird could reuse the parts, right? Yeah, it's like a parts car, but bird edition. Look at that. It's like it belongs there. I feel like I did my good deed for today. Should I put my hands in my mouth now? Like, Actually slid out very easily. That's surprising. Did not like what was happening. There you go. Ooh. Ah. I think it's gonna rain. Let's probably put those cars away.
What's up? I wonder why, I wonder why some of these broke. <laughs> Weird. Yeah, look how much corrosion there's in there. The threads are just like corroded. Just full of full of sadness. Good thing you got a pry bar on me. Is it Tony's? <laughs> you know, I, we've been doing this last video. If it's a flathead screwdriver and it's Tony's, it's a pry bar. If it's mine, it's a flathead screwdriver. Bigger <laughs> pry bar. <laughs> the stud that broke off, that's still inside there, broke off. It was stuck, to, like it corroded into the water pump housing. So keeping us from pulling it off. So I'm gonna torture here. Hopefully it'll come off then. Is it coming? The stud right here that broke, Yeah. it broke because it was corroded through here. Right. And now like, it won't come off that stud. I, I, it's hot. Yep. I, I just torched it's... it. <laughs> Which part? Is your microphone on? Yeah. Okay. Spray a lube in there? I did not yet because I didn't know if it would matter at this point because I'm already trying to pull it off. It helps. Yeah, it still helps. Might shock it. Let me grab a rag or two. I like superheated this lube immediately with <laughs> my hand. Don't worry, I got a pry bar for this situation. Wow. Oh, it did, it did just need a little lube. Mechanical fuel pumps are V8 thing. Getting off water pumps are a V8 thing. Anything Ryan struggles with, this is a V8 thing. It's gonna be real, real close. And here we might have like, Less than 22, so we've got to come out this far, and I'm not sure. I'm trying to remember how far this was from the firewall. I don't think it was an inch and a half, but we'll see. Well, we also have to factor in the thickness of the adapter plate. We have to do that too. Which is probably another inch. Understand this. Ah! <laughs> it's off. <laughs> it's off. <laughs> it's a little bit dramatic, but I'll say so myself. Looks like a V8 thing. Well, the problem is that we've got no way to bolt that to this. So here I have uh, an experiment with an adapter for a different engine to this transmission. And so now the plan is to make a quick adapter out of this that will adapt this to that. Um, obviously the piece will already bolt to this. So we can drill a couple of holes and have it bolt to that. Um, it'll at least give us something for mock-up. And that's roughly the same thickness as the adapter we will be buying, probably. Roughly. Yeah. If you were to guess, right. it'd be good, good enough so to mock-up with. Right now you can buy until we buy the adapter, yeah. but that's it, it's a four-week process to get that. Yeah. And it ain't super cheap either. And a couple couple grand. Yep. Yep. I just pulled the thermostat off. I don't know what mouse got all that corn in it. So there was a hose in this. So I don't, I, it must have been traveling like a two foot long hose to do this. Also, I'm pretty sure that's mouse poop I just dumped my hand, so that's nice. Yep. Yeah, look at that. There's scrap on output. That's all the stuff you knocked around. Yeah. Yeah, it goes all the way around. That's exciting. That didn't even need to be broken free. Yeah, this isn't really going to do us any good. Okay. Because this bell housing is way bigger than both, I think. Okay. I don't think we're gonna have anything here that uh, so that lines up. But we have this pattern though. Yeah, we have that pattern. So what if we just take this pattern, lay it on whatever, mm -hmm. an oversized piece of cardboard, and then take that same pattern, put it on here, and poke those holes out, and we have we need it. I mean, that's, I, I think that's our, right. no, I, I did not put this engine on the stand. My, my cousin's husband did. So I, I gave the car to him, um, and so that, cause he was going to fix it up, restore it. Cause we were, we were going to autocross together. And then, uh, you know, he got it disassembled, uh, got it to like the pile of parts that we have back there and, and the bare shell. Um, and you know, and then, then he realized that, that he wasn't going to be able to do anything with it either. So I got it back, but, and this is kind of weird, but now he also passed away. So everyone who's been you owned this car or drove this car to an extent anyway maybe i don't know what happened to the guy who our titled wrecked it in the first place but since then yeah so you're saying we should use it anyway yeah i, I don't believe in curses so
the camera peeker. We gotta get the engine off the engine stand and onto this engine table. But to do that, we gotta get this engine and transmission off the engine table onto this dolly. I am tired thinking about it. Three, lift with your back. Nope, other way. There you go. Watch drop your hand, your watch your hand. Drop your butt, drop your butt. Where the, because the, it's gonna touch here more. We're good, look at that. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> it's probably stuck, but also. Yeah, it's stuck. Don't lock the engine off, Ryan. Just get this thing out. <laughs> oh God, it's heavy. So I have an idea. We have an adapter for the Boxster and we need to adapt it to fit this. And, <laughs> and with that, um, it's just temporary. We're gonna make a couple blocks probably to make it work, not actually make a whole ring because this is not functional. It's just to bolt it together for now until we actually buy the parts we need. So this will save me some time. There's already a template. Yeah. All right, better idea. Yep. We're gonna make little tabs that are independent. One for here, I'm oh, sorry, one for here, one for here, and one for here, which I can make all three identical and it'll be yeah. like universal. Yep. And they'll make Audit sense when I make them. In, yeah. Uh, thread it in on the other. Yep. And then, yep. It'll make sense when I make it. Warp mode, warp speed mode. Let's see if it works. So the cutting head with the torch here was a little bit off when I came in the room. It had like walked in the holder and I put it back in where I thought it was supposed to be. However, it's not. So it's a little miscalibrated. So I need to recalibrate it. However, I'm gonna leave it alone because we don't have time for that right now. But you can notice like kind of like these lines are kind of spread like this is the longer distance to that distance because of that. But with what we're making and being a temporary fix, it's not a problem. But I need to remember for future Ryan to actually fix that before I cut something important later. To mock up this transmission, to the engine, I'm gonna use these adapters I just made by bolting them to the transmission, and I'll be able to rotate them as needed to meet with these bolt holes. Three points of contact, uh, three, three points of contact should be enough to keep this thing sturdy enough inside the car to figure out if it's even gonna fit. And then uh, when we actually get the real adapter plate, we'll be able to put power down. This is just for, for mock-up. Look at that, that should work. This one has like a little like dowel that's for locating that spaces it out. I'm just gonna offset the amount of washers I used to compensate for. I think it's like two washers. Yeah, two washers is perfect. So I'll just do two less on this side. Done. Now we gotta do the fun part of getting this to there. And the other, other fun part is uh, the only standard bolts we have to use this are the ones that are on the engine stand. They're way too long. So I'm gonna like sleeve them and hope for the best. This is just a bunch of rigging. Hopefully this is gonna not go too deep. Boop, 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 boop. Like my little peak, what I picked out there, it's nice to split, so. It, Actually, yeah. you, guys, you guys did a good job keeping that pretty center. It's a little high, but that's okay. Here. This is gonna be high. Yes. No chance, I don't want to smash it in. Uh-huh, that's what they all say. So you get stabbed with a pick. It's yeah, fine. I know, I know, but right now we're clearing. Now, of course, we don't have water pump or any way to get coolant pipes out. But. Well, we'll figure that out. We'll figure that out. Yep, yep, that's what these tests are for. Right? And it's leaning back a little bit because the subframe's in the way, but we're probably like five inches back. We're five inches back? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, then we're nowhere near making this work. Hmm. That's a bummer. Like I said, I mean, the firewall in this is not just firewall. I mean, there's there's a huge frame member that goes across that the rear section of the car here. I'd say it's about average, but... Come look. Come to the front. I don't know to look at your member. So, our initial hope with putting the engine into Jigsaw 
was that we could maybe just have to move the firewall forward a couple inches and be good at minimum. However, Tony went out and sat in a boxer with a seat a little bit forward. And what were you, what was your findings there? <clears throat> If I'm the only person or you are the only one that drive it, we could be a little tight and be all right. But otherwise, yeah, it's it's too close. We were hoping that if we stripped everything off the front of that engine and maybe got out the big ball peen hammer, <laughs> uh, we could uh, maybe shoehorn it in there. But we're back to our uh, plans B, C, and D that we've been talking about. Yeah, and hoping that it wouldn't actually be the situation. So we talked about moving the subframe back and then using that for like, we need roughly five, six inches of more space. However, moving the subframe and getting the suspension geometry right and everything else would be a complete headache, especially since it's a German car, so there's like a million parts and mounting points, everything else. So that we concluded is not viable. Yeah, I mean, we're changing the body anyway, so we weren't worried about moving the wheels, so that seemed good. Moving these two bolt holes, not such a big deal, but We've got that pickup point, we've got the upper strut mount, and then all of the structure that's been added to support all those points is all gonna have to get moved along with it. Yeah, so this is just, like I said, too many parts to move. Too many moving parts. To move. To move. Parts, move, parts. Safety is also a concern here, because we need to extend this chassis, but we kind of don't want to deal with the main cabin itself, the tub itself. We don't want to have to cut into that too much. Uh, we are going to add tubing to the car in general. And uh, who knows, depending what we do, it may end up being caged, I'm not sure. But that's for down the road. Right now though, we have to extend the chassis. So I think what we might try to do is stay behind the firewall and extend it between the firewall and roll the suspension and mounts. And then you can just kind of extend, but not have to redo all the mounting. So all that to say, we need to know the exact dimensions of the engine and transmission, which we don't fully know yet before we do any of this. So we gotta do some research on the parts we need to buy, probably even get some of those parts, and then we're gonna strip this down even further somehow and cut it in half. We did name it Jigsaw for a reason. Yeah. So thanks for watching, guys. We're super stoked that we have this engine stripped down and we have an idea of what's going on now. Got rid of that bird's nest. That was important. Uh, that was, we rehomed that bird's nest. I put it in a Good. tree. Perfect. So we did, we did a good deed. Um, anyway, we'll catch you guys next week. Bye.